Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics 3 Tutor, and in this section we're going to continue talking about capacitors. In this section we're going to start to talk about energy storage in a capacitor, which is really sort of the whole point of having capacitors and circuits anyway. So we've, we've talked about how to calculate capacitors in series and parallel and gotten some experience with the theoretical basis of what a capacitor is, and now we're going to start to talk about how many joules are actually stored in a capacitor. Uh, which is, you know, a very useful thing uh, to, to be able to calculate. Um, I want you to recall from earlier sections that just basic electric theory, uh, when we have an electric field present in this room, which by the way we do all the time, then that electric field has the potential to do work on a charged particle. If we have an electric field here, I could draw some arrows on the board, for instance. If we put a proton or an electron just sitting out there in free space and we let go of it, then that electric field is going to begin to move and that Coulomb force is going to appear and push that electron or that proton along according to Newton's laws, F equals ma, but that force is going to pop up and that force is going to be what we call electrostatic force and it just is because that electric field and that particle are in basically the same location. So when you boil it all down, that electric field has the potential to do work on that charged particle just like this gravitational field has the potential to do work you know, when I'm holding an apple up here. As soon as I let it go, it begins to move. So that, that gravitational field begins to convert that potential energy into kinetic energy. So if I'm holding a proton there, I have potential energy as well. If I let it go, it's going to begin to move. So the electric field, when it's present, it, it does sort of contain and, and sort of represent energy that's there. The potential to do work is, is potential energy. So the fact that the field is there at all means that there's potential energy there or if you want to shorten it, you could just say there's energy there because the electric field. So electric fields have energy. We're going to learn later magnetic fields are also going to have energy and when you combine them into an electromagnetic wave that travels, that wave is going to carry energy you know, from me to you or from the sun to the earth. So it's sort of the nice circle of life there. Everything has energy in relation to electricity and magnetism. Um, so when we talk about the fact that an electric field has uh, uh, energy associated with it, potential energy, and we've also already said that inside of a capacitor with these two charged plates, there's an electric field in there. Then it stands to reason if there's an electric field inside that capacitor, which there is, then that capacitor is, is, contains energy or is storing energy. And that's kind of what we say in the beginning of the course. Capacitors are sort of like temporary batteries. They can sort of hold a charge and, and they can deliver charge whenever they need to. And, and that's coming from the energy stored in that capacitor to push those charges out when you connect that capacitor to a circuit. So that's sort of the general fluffy thought of why capacitors might contain energy. Now let's get into some of the math and figure out what it really is. Now let's draw a quick little picture uh, just to remind you. Uh, you know, you have a parallel plate capacitor. So here's one plate and here's the other plate. And over on this side, maybe you've got your positive charges. So this charge on this plate is positive Q. And then over here, maybe you have your negative charges because they always have to be equal and opposite. So this will be negative Q over here. Uh, that's just what we talked about in terms of a capacitor. So if that's the case, then what's the electric field going to look like in here? Well, it's going to go from positive to negative like this. So this is the electric field inside here. So I'm going to put like an E with a bar on top. That means it's a vector electric field there. So the electric field does exist between the plates. And we've already sort of talked with a little thought experiment. Um, we know that if we put a charged particle in here, it's going to move. Therefore, this field must have potential energy.